Hello and welcome to the training video for the routine use and troubleshooting of the BioFire Blood Culture Identification 2 or BCID2 panel. This video will discuss setup, loading, and troubleshooting of BCID2 panel results, as well as discuss additional testing that is recommended to be run in conjunction with the BCID2 panel. At the end of this training, you will be able to review setup of BCID2 pouches and loading on the BioFire Film Array Torch instrument, discuss additional lab tests to be run in conjunction with BCID2, and discuss results and troubleshooting of unusual results. The BCID2 panel tests for multiple gram-negative bacteria, gram-positive bacteria, yeast, and resistance genes. The full list of targets can be found in the instructions for use. The BCID2 is performed directly on blood culture samples that have been identified as positive by a continuously monitoring blood culture system. Blood culture samples must be tested within 24 hours of being flagged as positive. Always wear appropriate personal protective equipment, or PPE, including, but not limited to, disposable clean powder-free gloves and a lab coat. Be sure to protect your skin, eyes, and mucous membranes. Samples should be processed in a clean biosafety cabinet if available, or according to local laboratory guidelines. If a biosafety cabinet is not used, a dead air box, a splash shield, or a face shield can be used when preparing samples instead. Process samples in a dedicated work area. Clean the area and pouch loading station with 10% bleach, and wipe disinfected areas with water. Handle samples one at a time, always changing gloves between samples. Use clean gloves when removing reagents from bulk packaging bags and reseal bulk packaging bags when not in use. Place a red capped sample injection vial into the red well of the pouch loading station, taking care not to touch the inside cover of the red sample vial. Place a blue capped hydration injection vial into the blue well of the pouch loading station. To prepare the pouch, remove the pouch from its vacuum sealed package by tearing or cutting the notched outer packaging and opening the protective canister. Check the expiration date on the pouch. Do not use expired pouches. Insert the pouch into the pouch loading station, aligning the red and blue labels on the pouch with the red and blue arrows on the pouch loading station. To hydrate the pouch, unscrew the hydration injection vial from the blue cap and remove the hydration injection vial, leaving the blue cap in the pouch loading station. Insert the hydration injection vial's cannula tip into the hydration port located directly below the blue arrow of the pouch loading station. Forcefully push down in a firm and quick motion to puncture the seal until a faint pop is heard and there is an ease and resistance. Wait as the correct volume of the hydration solution is pulled into the pouch by vacuum. Verify that the pouch has been hydrated by checking to see that the fluid has entered the reagent wells located at the base of the pouch. Small air bubbles may be seen. The leftmost well will remain dry at this time and will be hydrated in the next step. If the pouch fails to hydrate and the reagents still appear to be dry white pellets, Attempt to rehydrate the pouch by pushing down on the hydration injection vial to verify that the seal of the pouch hydration port was broken. If the hydration solution is still not drawn into the pouch, discard the current pouch and retrieve a new pouch to prepare. To prepare the sample mix, 
add sample buffer to the sample injection vial. Hold the sample buffered ampule with the tip facing up. Firmly pinch at the textured plastic tab on the side of the ampule until the seal snaps. Invert the ampule and dispense the entire volume of the sample buffer into the sample injection vial. Avoid touching the tip of the buffer ampule to the inside of the sample injection vial. The sample buffer vial may also come with a plastic tab on the tip. To open these vials, gently twist and remove the tab at the tip. Thoroughly mix the positive blood culture bottle by inverting it several times. Wipe the bottle septum with alcohol and air dry. Transfer the desired amount of blood culture sample into a sterile secondary container using a syringe or other alternate subculture device. Alternatively, you may measure out 200 microliters of blood directly from the blood culture bottle using a 1 milliliter syringe and add it directly to the sample buffer in the sample injection vial. Dispose of the used transfer device in the appropriate biohazard sharps container. Draw the blood culture sample from the secondary container to the second line of the transfer pipette and add it to the sample buffer in the sample injection vial. Discard the transfer pipette in a biohazard waste container. Tightly close the sample injection vial. Remove the sample injection vial from the pouch loading station and invert the vial at least three times to mix. Then return the sample injection vial to the pouch loading station. Slowly twist to unscrew the sample injection vial from the red cap and wait for 5 seconds with the vial resting in the cap to decrease the risk of dripping and contamination from the sample. Lift the sample injection vial, leaving the red cap in the well of the pouch loading station, and insert the sample injection vial cannula tip into the pouch sample port located directly below the red arrow of the pouch loading station. Forcefully push down in a firm and quick motion to puncture the seal until a faint pop is heard and the sample is pulled into the pouch by vacuum. Verify that the sample has been loaded. If the pouch fails to pull sample from the sample injection vial, the pouch should be discarded and a new pouch retrieved to be set up. Discard the sample injection vial and hydration injection vial in the appropriate biohazard sharps container. Label the pouch and remove the pouch from the pouch loading station. To load the pouch, select an available module on the touch screen. Scan the pouch barcode to automatically enter the pouch identification information. Enter the sample ID by typing it in manually or scanning a sample ID barcode. Insert the pouch into the selected module. As the pouch is inserted, the module will grab onto the pouch and pull it into the chamber. Follow any additional prompts on the screen, including logging in with a username and password. Then select Next. Review the entered run information on the screen, then select Start Run to begin the run. Blood culture media may contain non-viable organisms and or nucleic acids at levels that can be detected by the BioFire BCID2 panel. All BioFire BCID2 panel results are intended to be interpreted in conjunction with Gram stain results. A discrepancy between Gram stain and BCID2 results will alert the technologist to the need for further testing for confirmation before reporting the results. Subculturing of positive blood cultures is necessary to recover organisms for susceptibility testing and epidemiological typing. To identify organisms in the blood culture that are not detected by the BioFire BCID2 panel, and for determination of species detected but not identified within complexes, groups, or genera by the BioFire BCID2 panel assays. The BioFire BCID2 panel two-page test report is automatically displayed upon completion of a run. Each report contains a run summary, a results summary, and a run details section. The run summary section displays an overall summary of the test results. A negative result 
will display none in the organism's detected field. A positive result will display a list of any organism that was detected in the organism's detected field. If the antimicrobial resistance gene assay was positive and there was an associated organism detected, it will be displayed below the organism's detected field. Otherwise, it will display none if all the applicable antimicrobial resistance gene assays were negative. A trained healthcare professional should carefully interpret the results from the BioFire BCID2 panel in conjunction with a patient's signs and symptoms, results from gram stain and other diagnostic tests, and any relevant epidemiological information. What if there is a discrepant result? In this example, the BCID2 panel showed E. coli and Candida albicans as detected, but the gram stain only showed gram-negative rods. This is considered a discrepant result. Remember, all BioFire BCID2 panel results are intended to be interpreted in conjunction with gram stain results. In some cases, the gram stain result and the BioFire BCID2 panel result may be discrepant. In these cases, the BCID2 panel results should be confirmed, whether by culture or other laboratory, epidemiological, or clinical findings. Blood culture media may contain non-viable organisms and or nucleic acids that may lead to false positive BCID2 panel results. Typically, these false positives present with more than one positive result from the BCID2 panel. Thank you for joining us for this BioFire BCID2 panel training video. If you have any questions or concerns, refer to the instructions for use and call BMRU technical support.